and if are in listen only mode. Good evening everyone. Welcome to Admiral Market Session Recap of 2nd of December. We will see new setups today because we have many, many interesting patterns. But first, before we start with today's webinar, uh, I will show you what happened the last week so you can have a sneak peek and probably, and I hope that you have gained many, many pips. Uh, this last week was very successful, at least for me, uh, even though uh, I, I calculated around 100 pips, but there was a lot more potential for our setups, more for, for two or 300 pips for each of these pair. I don't know if you catch the moves, but surely uh, after the webinar I hope that you pay attention because I'm not sure that, that even, even now we have a nice market, especially on these four uh, currency pairs. But I'm not sure how long will it last because after all we cannot win each time, right? We, we have to lose sometimes, but you know, we are now at winning streak, winning streak and it's really, it's been very, very fruitful this, this month. So let's see where we were, first of all, where we were uh, last week. Okay, uh, I will be quick with this. Uh, market plan for Euro dollar of 25th of uh, November. It was buy around 38, 34.80, 34.60, with stops around 34.40, extremely good risk to reward. And what happened, actually, we will see, this was, I will zoom into 15 minute time frame, or let's say one hour, it's, it's better for this, yeah. This was the time where, when we had our webinar. You see, this is, let me clear this, we don't need this now. So, 25th of November, 6 o'clock, after 6 o'clock, when we finished the webinar, what we had in mind is to buy around 34.80, 34.60, targeting 35, 30, 35.70. What happened is that we didn't have that set up almost immediately, but after, after, let's say, two or three hours, the price stalled in. It wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't fall down, but eventually, after the webinar, it got rejected. The only retracement, what we could catch was this retracement, and that was of 25, three hours later. During next day, we had a direct jump, direct jump. Uh, eventually, look at this, a euro dollar was pipped out 35.70. It didn't make to our entry point, but it was direct jump to 35.70. So basically, of all of these setups, we didn't, but a sell scalp around 34.50, 34.50 was good enough. This was the point where, where we had sell scalp, that was an alternative. Let's see, it was 26th of November. Now I will go to 26th of November. Around 35, and this was the candle. It was good for only 10 pips. So either we could have got into a long trade with direct jump or a small sell scalp. By the way, after that, we had a great cable trade. That was the trade of the week, for me at least. Buy around 61, 40, 30 with stops around 61, 20, targeting 61, 85, 62. Basically, we didn't, as I remember, we didn't have a drawdown because after the webinar, you see the price action, even though tomorrow at 1 o'clock, the price went down. You see the level? You see the level? The price went down to 61.36, I said buy at 61.40. And that was a potential of 300 pips. But I, I hope that we are content with some 80, 90 pips for this, for this trade particularly. 
So cable was was indeed the, the trade of the week. Look, this is I, I need to say, uh, I, I I know that uh, these these sort of trades should have a drawdown by all technical means. At least we could have got into some slider down. But this particular trade, I don't know if these kind of trades, how many times we, we will have these setups again. This was the best risk to reward ratio I could have had in the last couple of months. Because my stop was only 30 pips, let's say 40, around 40 pips, and I even got some slighter than 62. Because I closed the trade, I, I didn't watch the charts and I closed the trade some 10, 15 pips afterwards. But potentially that was very, very good trade because we didn't have a drawdown. A single, look at this, almost a single pip without a drawdown. It happens sometimes, but not all the time. Also, a very good trade for Aussie. What I had in mind, I told you last webinar, my, my idea was to sell at 9120 BPC pattern targeting 9050. What happened is, this was the time when we had webinar, and we had a drop. And when I told you to sell, that was around this this time. Even though, if you have exploited the first swing to the downside, some 60 pips, we had a second chance trade. This was our second chance trade. Look at this, to the pip guys, not even a pip of a drawdown again. That is really, well, sometimes when those things happen, you can be very content with yourself and your trading. Maybe you can stop trading for that month because this this really is, you, you see, not a single peep of a drawdown here and there. And what, what we had, look at the low, six, uh, 90.55. So our target, well, I cannot give, we always need to have some, how can I say, uh, free space, okay? I, I told you target, it was target 90.50, but the price came to 90.55. It was a very, very good trade. Again, perfect trade, guys. That Aussie. And Euro Yen. Well, Euro Yen. Euro Yen, uh, let's see, Euro Yen, sorry. This was, this was, uh, I, I changed this. Uh, I don't have the slide for Euro Yen. This is the, uh, the slide for, let's see if I can have, because I wrote, yeah, this was the slide. Position by it, uh, 1360, 50, to 1359.7. Stops around 1354.0, targeting 1382.0. And what happened basically, what happened basically? I didn't take this trade because the price didn't didn't drop. You see where we had our trade. This was our webinar, this first horizontal or vertical line, sorry, and we didn't have that retracement. But then again, we had a nice, you see here, 26 of November, we had a nice scalp to the downside. Let me zoom in into 15 minute time frame. You see, what did, what did I write? Sell around 1377, okay? And that was around here. At least we could have got some 40 pips, but I didn't take this trade, I need to admit. Even though it was, it was a scalp trade and potentially very good trade, I didn't take it. I was very happy with those two trades, particularly on cable and on Aussie. Okay, so those were, if I can say, perfect trades, perfect trades really of the last week. And now let's see what we have today, okay? So this was session recap of 25th of, uh, of uh, November. Let's close it. And now we have session recap. All of these webinars are recorded, okay? So after I finish with the webinar, usually tomorrow a webinar is uploaded so you can watch it again. So you can see why I, do, why I potentially 
took the setup and so on. So everything is clear, everything is transparent. I never do any tricks, everything is transparent, you are watching me live, okay? And, and uh, all of those trade setups are basically, are basically what I also trade, if I trade, okay? Uh, I will uh, respond to your questions later, no problem. So let's, let's see now what I have prepared for today. Session recap, 2nd of December, Euro dollar cable Aussie and Japanese yen. Of course, there is disclaimer. As always, we need to respect. We need to respect the the procedure. Okay, there is disclaimer by accepting risk disclosure as a statement. You are accepting all risks associated with forex market, and you agree to proceed further with me. Okay, standard risk disclaimer. Market plan Euro dollar for today. Today, second of. December market plan is valid for two days, four hour time frame shifts. Uh, usually, uh, I think the plan is valid for two days, but sometimes when I do on one hour time frame, uh, a plan is valid until tomorrow. So let's see, this plan can be valid for uh, two days. Uh, but the thing is, very interesting setup. Very interesting setup. Uh, uptrend on four hour time frame with correction going on. The, the good thing is we have inverted triangle set up on four hour time frame. What is inverted triangle? This is inverted triangle, okay? Uh, if you saw my today's, I wrote on my spiders then. I need just to say I'm very proud of Forex Factory team because I need to say if you click I will show you this, use this slight opportunity. If you go on Forex Factory, go to high impact members, and if you, say, if you see there is only 2% of us who are uh, high impact members, there is a new vouching system, and Forex Factory is the, the biggest website on all websites for Forex market. It's, it's the one of the first thousand websites in on of all websites in the world, so it's very, 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 very big, incredibly big and strong website, and I'm really proud to be at the, at the first 50 members. So this is a nice, a nice, well, a good thing for for X Factory also to put these lines to. I know most of these traders; they're they're also really, really good. So Admiral. Also, thank you very much to, to give me opportunity to share my views with, with, with traders, okay? Uh, market plan for Euro dollar. Uptrend on 4 hour correction going vertical triangle on 4 uh, I have the, I have this in mind also. I had this in mind on Friday, if you remember. My analysis was to buy around 35.30. And today, we also had a potentially good trade around 35.30. I wrote that on Forex Factory. Uh, website, uh, this was, we might possibly have a potential wrong trade. And when I wrote this, the price was around 35.50 and then it dropped to 35.27. So if you had taken this trade, good. If not, maybe we will have another. What I see here is potentially a long trade. Because you see, we have a confluence here. This, this is a let's say intraweek trend line, okay? This is intraweek trend line. It has three touches, okay? Uh, but uh, we have also, interestingly enough, we have a uh, X trend line which is now broken. And those tr uh, two trend lines makes a confluence. The first confluence is H5 on Camarilla. And the second, why? Because it intersects with 36.25, it intersects here. And also, the, the other, this trend line, intersects with, with those three touches and 78.6 of the swing. This was the swing. Why this swing? Because that was the most prominent of the all last swings. We could have taken a FIBO from here, but I have, uh, why I didn't take it from here? Because this top was broken. So after this, this was the, the low, and then this was the high, double top. So basically, what I see is, this is pattern which, which can be exploited because it 
it should be long. So around those levels, around those levels, we could try to spot long opportunities. By around 35, 30, 35, 0, 5, it stops around 34, 85. Use, of course, leverage according to stop loss. You always enter your position, not according to your profit target. You enter position according to your risk. That means to your stop loss. So if you're, if you're uh, let's say, my, my uh, trading style, if you're trading, let's say, uh, $10,000, let's say that is 10K, and I have, let's say, uh, 40 pip stop loss, I would use 0 0.3, okay? 0 0.3 lot size. Because that is only 1.2% of a risk, okay? So you're basing your entries according to your stop loss. So depending on where you will take the trade, this is the buying zone. Of course, I wouldn't sell it there. I don't know, maybe the, the price will go and maybe we will be in some drawdown. But for now, at this moment, I can see it that we can buy it around there. We can buy it around there, okay? Even though, even though I need to say 88.6 is 35.05 and you know when you trade that 88.6 is also a deep retracement. If the price indeed wants to go there, maybe it, sh it should have dropped to this level. But any, any, anywhere, I don't want to see it below 35.85. I don't see, want to see it below there. Actually, it's 34.90, but I, want, I don't want to see it t below 34.85 because it will erase all the weekly gains. So, try to search for long trades around these levels. Even though if the price goes down and then close into this triangle, that will be also a signal to go long. We will see. Maybe the, 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 the price will go down test 3505 and then close, that will be a false breakout and potentially long trade, okay? And the other setup which is less prominent at the moment is sell scalp around 36, 40, 40, 20 pip stop, 20 pip target trail stop. So what does it mean? That means if the price spikes up, but I don't think it will spike now directly to 3640. I don't think so. And the other alternative is, guys, the other alternative is to go for breakout pullback continuation at 34.85. If the price breaks to this level, it will, it will, it should make breakout pullback continuation pattern. I will use 20 pip trailing stop for that purpose. But my potentially potential trade will be too long on next dip and to put stops there so we will see how it will go now on cable uh, sorry for these support resistor levels I didn't uh, I didn't uh, put the correct numbers uh, because I was really having uh, a lot of work okay and now just concentrate on these these uh, setups. Don't watch support resistance levels. Tomorrow also I will be presenting you a table which I did also today. I will be presenting you with this table so you will see cable and euro dollar levels. Okay, let's see now the table. This was the table for scalping purposes. You will have three times uh, per week I will post these tables, these sorts of tables, so you can scalp with these levels. So for this webinar, concentrate on setups. Don't look, look at these uh, support and resistance levels because they are incorrect at the moment. Okay. So bullish zigzag on four hours. So what what is bullish zigzag? Zigzag pattern. This is zigzag. Trust pullback, trust pullback, trust pullback, trust pullback. This is indecision candle. This is indecision candle. Spinning top also. But what what can 
it mean? I think, I, I think that this cable is again good for long setups. I see buy around 60, 30, 63, 40, 50 with stops around 63, 10, targeting 64, 40 and 65. So I can see that if it drops, this is a confluence, 78.6. By the time we take the webinar, we already had this opportunity. You see, 3 o'clock. But, well, our webinar is at 6 o'clock, so maybe we have missed it, but I'm not sure. Usually, market gives a second chance. So I, I, am, I want to see the, the pullback around here, and of course, I don't want to see it anywhere below 63.10. And this should go up, but if that happens, because it might happen, that the price breaks to this level. I hope it won't. My analysis say this the first, but alternatively, buy runs, if it happens, I don't know, maybe some news will drop the price down and then it will correct itself to go up again. Then we should buy around 62, 60, 40 and stops around 62, but targeting 66. Because I see the potential for this currency pair to go to this level, red level, 6604. I say 66, but actually it's 6604. What is 4 pips for 200 pips? Nothing. So basically, I'm watching for long setups. So first trade around here, second chance pullback, and the second attempt would be around my red level 62, 65, if it happens to go there. This is really strong uptrend. Aussie, Aussie is a downtrend. Okay, again, don't watch these levels. Bearish zigzag on 4 hour time frame. This is bearish zigzag. Now we have a trend line, okay. This trend line, one touch we can say, double top one touch. Second touch is here, third touch, retest, four touch, almost Confluence 61.8. The thing is, by the time I wrote the analysis again, it, it, it is going down, guys. It is going down, but I, I would like to see it again. Sell at 91, 55, 70, targeting 99 with 30 pip stop. Okay, this is, uh, we don't need this, and we don't need this. So sell it. 91.55 target in 90.90. What I see is the target. Well, you see, when I made the analysis, the price was around 91.40 when I, when I was writing the analysis. And I was hoping for the price to go test the level and, and get back to this level. And what I see now, I see that the target has been hit. Well, now, what, what can I say, guys? Almost the same thing happened today. After I finished with my analysis early in the morning, early in the morning, you see the price was 35.68. Uh, but, 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 but when I wrote the analysis, even it was above 35.70. When I posted the analysis, it was 35.68 and some 10, 15 minutes uh, later, the price went to to target price actually it hit the target the same thing happened to me again while i was writing the analysis it the price was 9140 and now it, it it hit the level so what i see is uh now it's hard for me only the second chance the second chance pull back to 9195 This is what, what we can have if the price pulls back in Asia. 91.25 because this is where the price intersects, making a confluence. Third swing, 50% confluence, red level, 91.25. So I am aiming, uh, if, if this happens, the third swing stop should be just above uh, 91, let's say 91.70. With 91.70. 72 stops. Well, you, we, we can see that the price is really 
making hmm, nice drop. But okay, maybe we will have an alternative. Maybe we will have an alternative scenario. This is sell around 9050 breakout pullback continuation pattern. Now I need to. Uh, this is if that happens. What is breakout pullback continuation? Breakout. Let it, this is more more. It's it's clearer if I do it like this. Breakout. Pullback. Continuation. That is called retest or BPC pattern. Breakout. Pullback continuation. This is breakout point. Okay, one, two, three. Three is retest or pullback, and you enter when this second point, breakout point, has been broken. So breakout pullback continuation, BPC. Okay, BPC pattern. If we happen to get the trade around 9050, you see I have empty space around there. If it happens to go there and then uh, retest the pattern, we can easily have the targets hit targeting 90.00 and 89.60. So if it happens to come, go for breakout pullback continuation pattern, okay? Because you see the empty space around here, I don't have anything in between 9050 and 8956. The only thing I have is 00, zero level, which is natural support and resistance levels level. Okay, so if that happens, if that happens, see the price can indeed make breakout pullback continuation. But because this setup has already see the target by the time we are having the webinar. And Euro Japanese yen, what can I say about this pair? Not much. Why? Because it's very strong, it's in very strong uptend due to Japanese bank lowering the strength of Japanese yen. The only thing I can see is again same things buy at 60 hundred uh, and thirty six fifty but I am not sure if we will get there really because we are too high now we we need to have some sort of a pullback you see where where is this guys this was the last swing apparently okay I can say let's see this was the last swing and this was the last swing low when the price has indeed broken yearly highs so this will probably be broken. So I cannot draw a right Fibonacci level for this. And if we have Fibonacci here, and Fibonacci here at the last mini swing, where is the confluence? Here is the confluence. 138.40. Let's see 138.40. Sorry, I will... Oops. One... Euro Japanese yen, one thirty eight forty. Mm. But, but you see, the price will make a new high probably. But let's say, let's say that we have forty and one thirty eight twenty five. Somewhere around there could be our buy setup. Standard. 30 pip stop. Targeting, of course, the first round number. Sorry, it was, yeah, 140. It was 140. Of course, 140. I don't see anything except if the price gets to 140 go for a scalp so this is what I see on 
euro Japanese yen guys hard to say now proper technical analysis because you see the price the price will make a new high if it makes a new high then we need to readjust our fib but the first confluence is here and the second confluence is there I would go because this is a strong uptrend I would go for the first confluence if the price doesn't make a new high if it makes a new high with I don't know five or ten pips new high then this is also a valid setup it's not much but if it goes to 140 without without with breaking this high directly well guys then we need to readjust our FIPS if it stays like this it should retrace to these levels 138 40 or 138 24 I would say 25 okay 30 pip stop targeting 140 if the price indeed makes a new high then we can try to scalp around this level 100 for for a scalp I I I I I will only make 10 stop on on this trade 10 pip stop so go for a scalp to one to one risk reward ratio one to one R to R not a perfect one but again it's a scalp trade because I presume that this level is protected so it should if it comes there it should at least give us a give us a nice scalp trade okay guys I will show you these uh, these slides again I will now you can ask me questions uh, GBP Aussie GBP Aussie let's see what I see I don't have a proper my Camarilla MACD template now I also don't have red levels with, with I also don't have red levels here but what can I I, I let's see that I I put my template let's see here what I see now is let's see I cannot make any divergences right now okay what I see this is W pattern this has spot immediately this has come into my mind W pattern put the line over there let me check I 8013 it's double top yeah if it goes to 8015 we can have a nice W pattern setup target of course this is confluence around 8060 so this is what I see this is what I see okay on GBP Aussie buy if it goes above 8015 this is W pattern target should be around here 8060 this was this was the fastest setup I can I could have now because I don't have red levels I need to I need to put red levels on GP Aussie I didn't prepare it but eventually by standard charting analysis W around here buy and retest of this level or a potentially trigger happy trade and dry, try to drive it to 8060 so you should put stops below this because these levels but you see these levels are strong it's basically a double bottom you see a double bottom here so go for it if it happens next question is next question is could you show again what is inverted triangle? Inverted triangle is this. Uh, sometimes you can have a broadening top or expanding triangle. This is a bit of different from inverted triangle. Uh, I will make it like this. This is inverted triangle this is standard triangle and this is inverted triangle this time we have a bit of ascending inverted triangle you see the lower 
trend line. So this is ascending and it means bullish. Ascending inverted triangle. Standard broadening top, I don't like to see it. It goes like this. But we have ascending inverted triangle. So, this is the inverted triangle. X trend line broken, new trend line spotted in the price within those two trend lines. So, this is inverted triangle. You see how it's broadening? You see how it's deflected from 35.40? Again, it should go like this. This is inverted triangle. Don't forget about, ah, yes, of course, you're right, Igor. Uh, today we will have, we will, let's open our calendar. Of course, guys, watch Aussie. This can be a spike, so we can have potentially nice sell if it spikes up. Yeah, GDP announcement. No, 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 that was, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, retail sales. Well, retail sales, they, uh, retail sales news have the impact, but not so big as this cash rate and this. This, this is more dangerous, guys. Watch for this. So maybe Igor is right. We should, we should forget about the trading Aussie after, after, or let's say, we can trade it maybe only after this announcement to the top of the hour. I wouldn't dare to trade it around this time if any one of you is, is awake because cash rate statement, statements can reverse the price. Maybe it can spike up the price because all of these, all of these, sorry, setups are very, very accurate. You see, sell at 9125, targeting 9090. 91.72 and all of those levels are basically accurate levels and strong levels so maybe after this announcement we will have we will have potentially good setups but always it's, it's always with, with those announcements they can have a strong impact and potentially reverse the trade you see now uh, while we talk again euro is jumping up of the 3540. Okay, that is for for this question. Confluence. Uh, Igor, I think we had a webinar about confluence, but we can have it again. I will I will try to be fast with this. Uh, Let's say that I have Camarilla, I have my red levels, I have a chart pattern which is, which is this expanding triangle. On this example, I, I want to see a cross of red line and level. This is the valid cross because it is the only level which we are in. But this is more valid cross because it happens after this level has been broken. So this level has been broken here. And this level has not been touched, but it's crossed. So I watch for this cross. H5, H5 on, on, uh, on uh, sorry, a euro dollar. And also here, 61.8, because this trend line intersects with this 61.8. And you see how many times we could have even have a nice scalp trade. Uh, here it is, 35.40 for some 10, 20 pips. And again, you see the reaction, second time, 35.45. You see, 61.8 is confluence and also 35.44 is a confluence because this lower trend line intersects with 61.8 and 35.44. Okay, that is a confluence. That is when I, I always look at intersection of those two. Of, of course, Camarilla Magdi is my propriet proprietary trading method, and it's uh, it's it's not free, but uh, of course there is much much there is much to learn for all the, all of those who want to learn 
about Camarilla MACD. It's a very, very deep course and it, it, you have to have at least basic knowledge of, of uh, market and forex prior to en enrolling for a course. Uh, I, I, I'm always, I will be always uh, posting my analysis basing, based on Camarilla MACD, but of course I do it for free for Admiral Market Webinars. I only post setups, but there are a lot of in between considering how I make entries, how I make confluence, how are those, what are valid ch chart patterns for Camarilla MACD, not all patterns are valid, so basically the answer to your question is the confluence is two when two or three technical indicators intersect between themselves, so in this and I, I don't I don't count uh, other technical indicators such as I don't know moving averages or RSI. In these setups, I counting only towards trend lines, Fibonacci, and levels. So when a trend line intersects with Fibonacci level and red level or Camarilla level, there is a confluence. Okay, I rushed to. Let me see. The question. Okay, I uh, let me see what it. What happened with Euro dollar this morning from London Open? Uh, the price gone down ninety degrees. Didn't help, and there was no major news for the area. Is the long? Okay, uh, law. I will explain what happened. And I, I, I also explained that on Friday. Uh, now I will, I will, this is faster way for me to scroll. Uh, on Friday, what I wrote was, look at this. I read. If the third time it goes there and got rejected, I hope we will reach 35.70 and 35.40. Where only a drop of 35.40 aims for 35.15.10. I think that 35.40 is a strong zone. We don't want to go too far with retracement as this pair is uptrending. Have in mind that it is Friday today, so there will be some profit taking. This, this is what I wrote on November. 29. That was the fr that was Friday. So basically, we had this. The uh, we had Thanksgiving Day, and we also had profit taking from uh, European banks on Friday. What happened is they prepared they prepared U.S. market and uh, Monday market for a drop. So that happened today. That happened today. The price went to test those levels which I mentioned on Friday. And I was, I was saying that this Friday setup can also be valid for Monday, basically. Because the price got rejected for the third time after Thanksgiving, they, they prepared London for a next drop. And this was a fake breakout, so-called fake out, to 36.15, and then bang, it went down. And by the time also I was writing the analysis, I already showed that the price was making its way to target price. So that happened on, on today. That happened today. So don't forget that Friday analysis can be also valid for Monday analysis. And also don't be, uh, uh, don't be, uh, how can I say, uh, don't be confused with, with that price action. This price action today was perfectly normal because, as I said, it was Thanksgiving Day, also Friday profit taking, and Asia accumulation and also a false markup prepared London and New York for a drop. So Asia was taking out short trades, preparing a London market for a bearish swing. 
sometimes Fridays and Mondays can be confusing, but I try to explain the best I could. Okay, I, I think that it's it's for you now it's it's enough. If if you if you understood it just say to me or if you didn't understand it you can I can explain again. Okay. I hope that you haven't made a long trade. That you didn't make a long trade so you you are probably in a loss. At least you could have got into that breakout to 35.44 or at least for a long trade something. Oh, okay guys, if you don't have any questions we can conclude the webinar. So I will I will scroll of, of, for, of, for all of these setups again. Uh, Euro dollar. Potential buy around 35.30, 35.05, it stops around 30.80, 34.85, targeting 35.95, 36.64, 30, subsequently. Sell scalp around 36.40, 40, 20 pip stop, 20 pip tra target trail stop or breakout pullback continuation at 34.85. GBP, buy around 63.40, 50 pip stops around 63.10, targeting 64.40, 65.10, or if it happens, that some news will push pull uh, pull uh, cable down. Usually, when price, when now I, I will I will show you this also. When price is making from uptrend or violently on news is making a U-turn, the price usually will correct itself and go again in trend direction. So if it happens for cable we can have this setup, but uh, technically speaking, this first setup is more valid, technically speaking. Uh, for Riozzi, of course, uh, we will have some cash rate announcements and some news, so pay attention to to Aussie this night. I wouldn't trade it just because of that announcement. 9125 targeting 9090 with 9170 stops, okay? Or sell around 9050 breakout pullback continuation pattern stop above last high high targeting 9008960. G N4 G Japanese yen buy at 1384, 1382, 30 pip stops targeting 1400. Sell around 1400. 10 for a scalp, 1 to 1 risk reward ratio, I would go for 10, 15 pips. So that is all concerning today. If you don't have any questions, we can conclude the webinar. As always, guys, base yourself, base your trades around your risks. Don't go with over leverage. Don't push it because it's very hard to trade. It's very hard to trade with big leverage when you have 30, 40 pip stops. Of course, that is trading. Forex is uh, is not meant for for uh, for uh, for you to get rich very fast. So we we always go step to step by step. And that is why we need to save our accounts. That is why we always go with good risk to reward ratio. If we are not careful with with uh, stops and with stop loss placements and doing it with a bit, bit of a big leverage, we are risking our accounts and our, our careers as forex traders, okay? So don't risk trade smart, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening to me. I wish you all green pips. I will come with new levels and new uh, euro dollar analysis tomorrow, but have in mind that these setups are valid for two days, okay? Thank you very much and see you very, very soon.